I'm not going to talk about becoming one of the popular kids. That's absolute bullcrap about a made-up social hierarchy that means bugger all once you graduate. So I'm here to tell you how I got to know a lot of people from my school because there are very few social environments where you have the opportunity to hang out and interact with people the same age as you day in and day out. And my popularity only came to my attention one day walking between classes. After saying hi to like six different people who walked past us, I got asked by a peer from my math methods class. How are you so popular, Denzel? I'm not popular, I just happen to know a lot of people. Maybe she said that ironically, but it made me think about how I knew so many different people. So here are my secrets. Greet everyone you know. It can be as simple as good morning, how are you, all with a smile and acknowledging them by using their name. Dale Carnegie mentions in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, the sweetest sound in the English language is someone's own name. To say someone's name is to acknowledge you know them and appreciate their presence. I must emphasize that you do it with bubbling enthusiasm. This ultimately comes in the form of a smile because what you are doing is giving the other person your simmering energy, not so much that they're overwhelmed and disgusted by your false happiness, but showing that you're keeping it cool and containing that enthusiasm you have for them. Hey, wait up. There might be times where I couldn't greet someone if they weren't walking past me. Alas, I had no shame shouting someone's name to grab their attention, walking up to them or asking for them to slow down so we could walk together. For example, I'll call out to someone to wait and I'll walk the one friend to their home group room, HGR. We'll chat for a bit and when their class was heading in, I'd say goodbye. Usually on the walk to my HR, I'll see another guy waiting for his class to go in and I'll strike up a conversation. This would repeat pushing the line of being on time and late for my own HR class. Again, this verbalizes that you care about these people because in a way, it's almost close to the feeling of attraction where it's that desire of wanting to be desired but in a platonic context. If someone shows that they want to hang out with you and will go out of their way to do so without anything in return, you'll appreciate that. For me, I ask for them to wait up so we can have a brief moment together just before having to go to class and do schoolwork. Junior, senior. Especially in the high school setting, you'll get the opportunity, for example, to have those junior, senior relationships. When moving up in grades, I'd always treat my lower classmen with the same respect I had with my upperclassmen. I believe that's what made me approachable to my juniors and perhaps my seniors because I didn't treat either of them with prejudice. Absolutely, there were people grades above that despised their younger grades. However, I took the more mentor-mentee approach. This could be friends who had younger siblings, someone younger in my HDR, or from orchestra or band. Even also picking back off my brother, I'd get to know a lot of people from his cohort. You'll know a guy who knows a guy. With a matter of time, looking outside in, your network will become like a giant spider's web. Like, as random as it may seem, you will start interacting with different groups all because you know one guy from that group. If you're a great friend, the likelihood that your friend will introduce someone else to you is quite high. You'll start from knowing one guy from the group to almost everyone from that group. That guy is friends with those guys who are also friends with these people as well. You, thus, have the intermixing of friend groups due to many singular points of contact. Again, you might not be friends with everyone, which shouldn't be the point at all, but you know people and or acquaintances with them. Authenticity, my friend, be more open. Yes, I had my main group, but I didn't cling to them for dear life. This was noticeable with the students who were in the creative arts. Strangely, the ones that were in the cohorts too below ours. They tend to hang out with people who were in the creative arts and only in the creative arts. You had some of us observing how they shouldn't be in their own little bubble and should be trying to branch out. Because if you went to a big school like I did, you have the opportunity to mix and interact with people from all different walks of life. Be open in the sense of getting to know different people, but also as a person. Generally, people want to be listened to and not be judged. Asking open-ended questions makes people know that you care for what they think and have to say. Whether it's the assignment, the job, their family, university, movies, games, etc. Most people care about themselves, and if you're the guy to not talk about yourself, you will be liked by more people. Being known for something. This is now treading through the territory of reputation, notoriety, and infamy. As much as it may seem, I do not like being different for the sake of being different. It's a matter of just being you. I can recall times that I'll be the odd man out. Whether it was wearing a MAGA hat, bringing a briefcase as my school backpack for a year, selling Coca-Cola or Krispy Kreme donuts, you want people to connect a story to your name without your intention. The best example I can think of is our valedictorian. Why does everyone know her name, even the ones who never personally met her or had classes with her? She was the highest performing academic and school captain. I'm grossly oversimplifying her story, but if you wanted a plausible explanation for why so many people knew her, that'd be it. And for me, doing some uncommon stuff or actually just being me is what gained a reputation. In fact, as soon as I learned, goodwill and positive interactions is what builds reputation the most. But I want to re-emphasize that forcefully creating a reputation for yourself that makes more people know you is not the goal. 
It's a byproduct of your interactions with people and your authenticity. Good people attract good people. Even though I told like six aspects of how I became so known, the process should take care of itself having more positive interactions with more people. You shouldn't try to befriend everyone. A friend of many is a friend of none. Because if you're a positive person who is open to listening to others and cares more about others than themselves, you will naturally attract people who fuck with that energy. This guide is more so about meeting a lot of people and showing that brief moment when you cross paths. And again, I don't think I'm special. It's the fact that you make people feel special by those small moments that compounds to the numerous people you know.